Now, your ideas of space are highly erroneous. So in my contacts with your sphere of activity, I do not sweep through bright golden skies like some spiritual superman into your physical domain. I will go into this in a later chapter, but in a very real manner, space as you perceive it simply does not exist. Not only is the illusion of space caused by your own physical perceptive mechanisms, but it is also caused by mental patterns that you have accepted. Patterns that are adopted by consciousness when it reaches a certain stage of evolution within your system. When you arrive or emerge into physical life, not only is your mind not a blank slate, waiting for the scrolls that experience will write upon it, but you are already equipped with a memory bank far surpassing that of any computer. You face your first day upon the planet with skills and abilities already built in, though they may or may not be used, and they are not merely the result of heredity as you think of it. You may think of your soul or entity, though only briefly and for the sake of this analogy, as some conscious and living, divinely inspired computer who programs its own existences and lifetimes. But this computer is so highly endowed with creativity that each of the various personalities it programs spring into consciousness and song and in turn create realities that may have been undreamed of by the computer itself. Each such personality, however, comes with a built-in idea of the reality in which it will operate. And its mental equipment is highly tailored to meet very specialized environments. It has full freedom, but it must operate within the context of existence to which it has been programmed. Within the personality, however, in the most secret recesses, is the condensed knowledge that resides in the computer as a whole. I must emphasize that I am not saying that the soul or entity is a computer, but only asking you to look at the matter in this light in order to make several points clear. Each personality has within it the ability not only to gain a new type of existence in the environment, in your case, in physical reality, but to add creatively to the very quality of its own consciousness, and in doing so, to work its way through the specialized system, breaking the barriers of reality as it knows it. Now there is a purpose in all this that will also be discussed later. I mention this whole subject here, however, because I want you to see that your environment is not real in the terms that you imagine it to be. When you are born then, you are already conditioned to perceive reality in a particular manner and to interpret experience in a very limited but intense range. I must explain this before I can clearly give you an idea of my environment or of those other systems of reality in which I operate. There is no space between my environment and yours, for example. No physical boundaries that separate us. In a very real way of speaking, your concept of reality as seen through your physical senses, scientific instruments, or arrived at through deduction, bears little resemblance to the facts, and the facts are difficult to explain. Your planetary systems exist at once simultaneously, both in time and in space. The universe that you seem to perceive, either visually or through instruments, appears to be composed of galaxies, stars, and planets at various distances from you. Basically, however, this is an illusion. Your senses and your very existence as physical creatures program you to perceive the universe in such a way. The universe, as you know it, is your interpretation of events as they intrude upon your three-dimensional reality. The events are mental. This does not mean that you cannot travel to other planets, for example, within that physical universe, any more than it means that you cannot use tables to hold books, glasses, and oranges. Although the table has no solid qualities of its own. When I enter your system, I move through a series of mental and psychic events. 
you would interpret these events as space and time, and so often I must use the terms, for I must use your language rather than my own. Root assumptions are those built-in ideas of reality of which I spoke, those agreements upon which you base your ideas of existence. Space and time, for example, are root assumptions.